Alrighty, so the Ethereum London update is actually right around the corner, and it contains the Ethereum improvement protocols 1559, 3198, 3541, and 3554. I wrote a post on it on my website and figured I would do a video as well going over the uh, EIPs in layman's terms. Alrighty, so first we have EIP 1559. This one's actually divided into two components. The first half of that protocol adds a base fee to every transaction to help stabilize and standardize the cost of transactions versus going with the current model, which is an auction base, uh, raising the price as the uh, demand on the system gets higher. And this part actually feeds into one of the other EIPs I'll go over in a second. The second part of this protocol changes the fee payout. So a portion of the fee will actually get sent to the burn address now, which should, by laws of supply and demand, increase the price of Ethereum, since with every transaction, a little bit of Ethereum will get burned. The second EIP, EIP3198 addresses smart contract fees. Basically, it should help stabilize and lower the fees that smart contracts like decentralized exchanges are paying. And then EIP3529 actually will do a lot towards network congestion. So currently with every transaction, there's an estimate of how much gas you will pay for. After the transaction goes through, the gas is returned to you. EIP3529 aims to declutter the network by removing or reducing gas refunds. This is actually made possible by EIP1559. With the standardized base fee, smart contracts should be able to better estimate the amount of gas that will be required to pay for something, meaning a transaction. That way there isn't two transactions for every one transaction submitted taking place, meaning you submit the transaction, pay the gas, and then another transaction of the gas returning to you. On to the next one. EIP3541 increases the possibilities of smart contracts. It reserves space within the network for future projects, allowing new types of smart contract. This will allow developers to add new functionality in the future without breaking the Ethereum virtual machine. That's pretty cool because it opens up the window for additional smart contracts apps to run on the Ethereum blockchain, ones that are not currently possible. And then we have EIP3554. This one's actually kind of ironic. EIP3554 addresses the bit of code that's known as the difficulty bomb, which increases the time between block creation. So with this hard fork, normally the amount of time between block creation would increase, right? But this EIP actually delays that until December 2021. Why I say it's a little bit ironic is because this bit of code was actually put in in 2015 to incentivize the Ethereum developers to implement Ethereum 2.0 sooner rather than later. So because ETH 2.0 is not out yet, and they were originally planning on it to be out by this time, they had to write a fix EIP3554 in order to address that difficulty increase, or what they call the difficulty bomb. But yeah, that's pretty much the rundown in layman's terms. This is not Ethereum 2.0 yet. This is about halfway there because they're getting rid of the miners, they're creating the validator nodes, and the fees that are normally paid out to the miners are getting burnt now. So with this, Ethereum isn't a proof of work anymore. It's more of a hybrid model between proof of work and proof of stake. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments. And I actually just created this account not too long ago because I wanted to switch away from my normal account so I can separate, you know, crypto and the other stuff that I do. So if you want to drop a follow, I'll try to do a video, uh, an educational video every day or so. And you can find my other socials and stuff on my website where I try to put technical stuff into layman's terms. I try not to shill any projects. However, if I do find something that's really neat, I do try to write about it and what I think is cool about it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye!